The president and his cabinet plan on discussing the issue in more detail tomorrow, and the White House press office says they will brief reporters after that meeting. Tomorrow night, we are back on the road for our Getting to Know You segment, visiting the city of St. Louis. And so for all of us here at the American News Network, have a good evening. All right, we're all clear. Thanks, guys. Another great job. Oh, thank you, Bill. Hey, the latest focus group research came in while you was on the air. Good. Yeah, it seems like they really like your getting to know you segment. I knew it. They just like the smaller towns instead of the larger cities. I know, I know. It's just really tough to get some of these field producers going to these out-of-the-way places. But I've got this new intern, Jason, working on it. He left last night for middle of nowhere in North Carolina. He's new, he's young, and he's enthusiastic about getting a job with the network. I'll bet he finds something. I'm not even going to worry about it. I trust you. Let's just give them what they want. Then that's what we'll give them. I'll let you know the very minute Jason checks in. Speak of the devil. Well, hello there, young man. I was literally just speaking to the boss about you. Give me some good news. Yes, sir, you bet. I just talked to a guy at a truck stop down here about some little town nearby called Whistling Pines. He said everybody there is literally crazy. Should prove to be a good lead. Yeah, I figured I'd check it out first thing in the morning. There you go. Find me some characters to interview and I'll come down there myself when we're ready to do the story. Good job, kid. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the day we've been waiting for. We get our brand new town sign. And this wouldn't be possible without the hard work and dedication of our sign committee, chaired by Bob. I think I've been busted by my niece. Um, I got the sign covered by a sheet that I took from her basket at the laundromat last night. Oh, Lord. Is everybody ready to see our new sign? help of Miss Whistling Pines, we're going to present our new town sign. Wait a minute. That sign says Whispering Pines, not Whistling Pines. What's up with that? Hey man, the sign company goofed. They said they'd sell me this one for half price. So I figured I'd save the town 1100 bucks. Why you big dummy. I say we take 1100 bucks out of your butt! Oh, yeah? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. You come back here, Bob! Hey, morning, Zach. Oh, hey, Mr. Mayor. Here's your paper. Mm. 
Thanks. Anything worth reading? Um, not quite sure, Mr. Mayor. I kind of quit reading the paper. You did? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. My granddad told me something really interesting yesterday. He said, well, you don't have to read the paper because it's just the same thing happening to different people. <laughs> well, your grandfather sounds like a pretty wise fellow. Your mom tells me you're a whiz on the computer. You know, if you keep that up, you might be like Bill Gates one day. He's a billionaire, you know. Well, I was thinking I'd want to be the guy who could afford to pay Bill Gates that kind of money. Zach, you're a genius. If you keep that up, oh, duty calls. See you, Mayor. See ya. Hello? I hope you're on your way in. Yes, ma'am, I am. You sounding awfully chipper this morning. Are you in possession of some major gossip again? Oh, no, sir. This here ain't gossip. This is verifiable news, and I mean news in the literal sense. Okay, I'll bite. What is it? Now, you've known me way too long to think I'd divulge something this big over the phone. I've got to tell you this one in person. Okay, I guess I'll have to wait. All right, then. We'll see you in five. Bob! You're not planning on shooting that thing within town limits, are you? Mayor, tug on it. A man ought to be able to protect his own property from vandalism. And since you wouldn't get the town council to pass my ordinance, I've had to take matters into my own hands. Well, if I remember correctly, your ordinance said squirrels were to be deemed as fugitives and shot on sight. We can't have people going around shooting every squirrel they see. That's crazy. I'm a law-abiding, God-fearing man. Well, Except for that one time, when I tried to blow up a squirrel's nest with a hand grenade, and the chief had me arrested. But, do you know how much money I've spent on bird feeders in the past two years alone? Don't throw that buy a squirrel proof feeder thing back at me. Squirrels have evolved, and they have figured those things out. And that sign coming into Whistling Pines says, Bird Sanctuary. Doesn't say nothing about no squirrel sanctuary. Bob, I know some folks at the state zoo, and, and let me call them and see if they got any suggestions, because I don't want to see you getting in trouble over this again. Well, I reckon I can hold out for a little while, but if I'm going to sacrifice my freedom to protect this entire town from these stupid squirrels, then I just might have to do it. Well, just give me a little more time, okay? I reckon. this much excitement since the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile came into town. Oh, this is much bigger than that. Much bigger. I have word from reliable sources that Matt Carson is coming to Whistling Pines and he's gonna do a story on our town. The Matt Carson? Of a and News? Yes! Wow. I wonder why he's coming to Whistling Pines. I know. We were talking about that too. And we were trying to figure out if it was because Judy Jackson won the Miss Vienna Sausage Contest competition, or if it's because her husband Billy won Mr. Bass Pro Shop last year. Do you really think it's something like that? Oh, I don't know, but I do know he's coming here. How do you know this? Now, Mayor, you know a good journalist never discloses her sources. Town of Whistling Pines. Yes. Yes, the chief. Oh. Okay, one more. Hello, chief. Hey, mayor. I hate to bother you. It's Jack again. This time he's blocking the front door of the grill. You know he's been reading that dang USA Today again. I could take him in, but I want to check with you. No, no. Don't do that. I'll, I'll be there in five minutes. I am not letting you in this way. Have you read the paper today? Look, 
Right here is a story about the government's war on fat. And on the same page, the same page is a story about a brain-eating bacteria. Don't you get it? The USA Today is warning us. We just got to be smart enough to get it. I'm here to protect your life. Listen, buddy, if you don't get out of the way, your life is going to be in danger. I want a hot dog. Mayor, am I glad to see you. Jack has really lost his freaking mind this time. Something about a government plot to replace fat and hot dogs uh, to eat our brains or something, I don't know. Hey, Jack. Mayor. The, the chief filled me in on your concerns, and, and those sort of stories, they, they just don't seem to add up. And that bacteria in the hot dogs just seems a little too obvious. What do you think? You might have a point. I never really thought about it that way. Yeah, well, let's go in and talk about it. Okay. So, you think it'd be okay for me to eat a hot dog? Because you know how I love hot dogs. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's go in and I'll have one too. Okay. About time. Thank you. Yeah. About time. Yeah, really is crazy. Why did you do this to me? You really left me with no choice, did you? Sorry guys, sorry. Denise, you're doing a great job. I just need just a little bit more believable passion, okay? Hello? Look, I'm a Southern Belle. Don't tease me like this. Are you serious? That's incredible. Look, I... I, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's just just an incredible offer. Uh, I'll just I'll just get ready and leave for New York in the morning. I'll see you tomorrow night. Okay. Thanks. All right, guys. Good job. I guess we're just gonna wrap this up tonight, and we're just polish this off tomorrow's. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Alrighty then. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Hey, Denise. Hey, how's your dad doing? Oh, he's much better. My mom talked him down from two nicotine patches to one, so he calmed down a lot. Well, that's great. Oh, well, looks like you're wrapping up a little early tonight. Yeah, uh, we just um, sort of stuck in this one scene, and I just thought I'd wrap it up early and just start fresh tomorrow. Hmm. Well, I was in the area and wanted to see if you Maybe want to go get something to eat. Uh, I'm really tired. I'd like to just finish everything up here tonight and just, I really just want to get out of here. I'll, I'll just grab something at home. You can go out and get you something if you like. Everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just, I just really want to get out of here tonight. I'm, can we just talk at home? All right then. Well, be careful. I will. Hank, hey, listen, uh, you've been assistant director of this playhouse forever, as long as I can even remember. Don't you think it's about time you really start directing one? No, I'm not kidding. This one, the one that we're doing now. Well, I need to head out of town for a couple of days, and I just, uh, I need you to do this. I'm serious. I, I think you do a wonderful job. I don't know why you're so shocked. You know I don't like this place. But Susan, you were raised here and we raised our daughter here. Well, she's off at medical school and I thought maybe when she gets back. Jim, please, listen to me. I don't want to direct plays in the tiny auditorium anymore. You're never gonna leave this place, ever. I, mean, I have this fantastic opportunity to direct on Broadway. Broadway. Yeah, I, I know. 
Well, look, let me call Carl and see if I can get some things lined up to where um, I could go with you here. Just give me a couple days. Jim, you would hate New York. It's not your fault. I would never ask you to give up your dreams. Please don't ask me to give up mine. Well, I woke up this morning, you were not there. Was the worst feeling that I ever had. Went to my neighbors, they told me the news. Now I'm here nursing these big apple blues. Chief. Morning, Mayor. Sorry I'm not in the office this morning. Uh, is anything wrong? Well, Mayor, two things really. First, I don't want you to think that I'm prying or meddling into your own personal business, but I just really want to make sure you're alright. You heard already. It's a small town. Well, I don't know if I'm still in shock or, or what. Quite frankly, I don't know if I should stay or go up to New York. Uh, you know, she might get up there and she just might not like it, you know. You know, anything's possible. I mean, I just want to make sure that you weren't hurting. Well, maybe I should just give it a little more time. You know, my father once told me that if you love somebody, you gotta set them free. And if they come back, you know, it's meant to be. Have you ever heard that one? Yeah, I believe I have. Guess I'm just rambling. What's the other reason you stop by? Well, it's Bob. I'm afraid that he's setting himself up for a lot of trouble with this squirrel mess. He's not shooting guns off again, is he? Well, he's about as close as a man can get. Now, I can handle it if you want me to. I could just take him in and talk to him. Well, I'll tell you what, the Distraction might do me some good. I'll I'll go with you, okay? All right, let's get going. What kind of contraption is this thing? You know, look here, I see what he's trying to do. The squirrel trips the trigger and fires the gun. That's right. And if the squirrel pulls the trigger, he's the one that should be charged with discharging a firearm in the town's limits. But Chief, you can't charge him because he just committed squirrel suicide. <laughs> bye bye. I don't think it exactly works that way. Why not? You ain't kidding there. Bob, if you're the one that set this up, then you're the one that committed a conspiracy to discharge a firearm in town limit. What? You mean I could be charged with conspiring with squirrels? No wonder this country's gone to hell in a ham basket. That hits me this, Chief. If I can be charged with conspiring to discharge a firearm, then what does the squirrel get charged with? That is, if he lives. Lord, you know, I should have had you involuntary committed. Me? You're the one that spends half your shift in front of the quick mark. What's that about? 
afraid somebody's gonna buy the last pack of sugar donuts. You know, I ought to do something like this. Hey, hey guys, just relax. Bob, I'll take you down to the grill and buy you a hot dog so, so we can talk about this. Well, that works. Can't turn down a free hot dog. Thank you. It's going to be phenomenal. Baby, what time is it? Phenomenal with the capital. Hey, really? Hey, baby, really? What time is it? First of all, I ain't your baby. And my mama taught me to never talk to strangers. Stranger? I ain't no stranger. My name is James Pratt Jackson. We went through 12 grades of school. Same class. Little one block from each other. You know, how you gonna call me a stranger? Baby, hey, tell me what, what time you got. We're strangers because your butt never had time for me in 30 something years. You wanna know what time it is? It's time for me to borrow one of Bob's squirrel's guns and shoot another animal, a jackass. And another thing, what's this thing about your name, Pratt? I only heard that in the last couple of years. When we were in school, our teachers called you James. That's my new adopted middle name. It stands for practical, because I'm such a practical man. For crying out loud, if that's the case, then why do you sign it P-R-A-C-K? <laughs> Everybody knows there's no K in practical. Hey, Mayor, have you been out there yet? I can't say as I have. I'm, I'm not much of a fisherman, though, you know. Well, it's worth the drive out there, if nothing else but to see the sign. They call it the Minnow Fishing Club, but they spell it M-I-N-O-W. Mr. Practical over there must have been responsible for the sign because anybody else would know that there are two N's in Minnow. You, you spying on us out there? I'm the town manager, and I don't drive anywhere I darn well please in this town. Oh, darn. What? I forgot to wash my hands. Oh, oh Lord. Much better. You mean I gotta eat with Jack to get a free hot dog? What is it you have against Jack? He's always running to you, telling on me about what I'm doing to protect myself from these stupid squirrels. He's like a kid. Mayor, mayor, wah, wah, wah. Bob's at it again. He's trying to kill the poor little squirrels. Wah, wah. Maybe I ought to eat by myself. Besides, he ruined my fate. I never believed in evolution until I saw him eat a hot dog. <laughs> like a boa constrictor eating a deer. Come on, guys. Settle down. Just have a hot dog with me, will you? Come on, Bonnie. Let's get out of here. This is getting too crazy, even for Whistling Pines. Hey, baby, where you going? You never told me what time it was. Okay, boys, what do you have today? Hey, Doris, I'll take a hot dog and... No, not just a hot dog. Special's two hot dogs for the price of one. I'll put you down for two. All right, well, make it two then. I guess I'll have the same thing, Doris. And I'll take a medium sweet tea. No, you'll have a large. It's just the same price today as a medium. I'll put you down for a large. <laughs> oh. And let me figure this one out. You want a squirrel burger, don't you? <laughs> Small town comedian. You'll just take whatever I give you. There, there's something wrong with her. Something wrong with her? Something wrong? If that ain't the pot calling the kettle crazy right there. Hey, Mayor, have you seen the USA Today? Today? 
No, I haven't. Well, look, on page 4C, there's a story about a big economic summit going on overseas. And then if you turn over to section C, that's the entertainment section, there's a story about Sandra Bullock telling Jesse James to go butt a stump. I haven't got to that story yet. Don't you get it? Sandra Bullock is mad at Jesse James. Jesse James? See, Jesse James was shot by that sheriff back in the 1800s. And she's talking to him. Now the government claims they're overseas at some big economic summit. There ain't no economic summit. They're over there experimenting with some magnetic mind control device, and they got it tuned in on Santa Bull. And you guys say I'm crazy. Oh. Hi, is Susan Hill there, please? Oh, okay. Well, I'll just try back later. Thanks. Hey, guys. Hey, Mayor. Hey, Mayor. We hate to bother you at home, Mayor, like this. Yeah. Chief here, huh? He told us about what happened with Susan, and uh, we you know we feel really terrible about acting a fool down at the diner today, sir. Yeah. Hey guys, n no apology necessary. Uh, quite frankly, I enjoyed the diversion. Well, you know, we're all in agreement anyway that once she's in New York City and gets used to it, she won't like it one bit. Yeah, you know that place is just filled with conspiracies. <laughs> yeah, but I bet you they don't have many squirrels. Oh God! Shut up! For once, just shut up. So sorry. Sorry, really, guys. It's okay. Look, Mayor, we just came here just to ask you to come to a meeting of the Minnow Fishing Club on Friday night. Yeah. Yep. Well, I don't really have a reputation as being a fisherman, but you guys fish at night. Fish bite better at night. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you could say they bite better at night, but you don't even have to do any fishing. Just come by for a visit. It's a lot better than sitting around here all by yourself on a Friday night. How about that? You, you said that well. I guess you're not as stupid as I thought. Oh, Lord. Do you, you know, well, just stop it. Both of you, both of you just stop it. Man, Jack's right. You don't have to stay any longer than you want to. Yeah, just come on. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys thinking about me. It could probably do me some good to get out of the house. Oh, yeah. So I'll see you then. Come All on. Right. All right. Sounds yeah. like a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. Word. Looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. All right. You have a good time, sir. Well, hello there, Mayor. What can I do for you today? Well, hi, Doris. I think I learned my lesson. I'm gonna have two hot dogs and a Coke. No, I don't think so. That was yesterday special, and besides, you don't need to be eating two hot dogs two days in a row. I'll tell you what I'll let you have. You can have one hot dog and some fries. Okay, thanks, Doris. Well, well, who is running town hall? We need to talk to you. Sure, what's up? Is it true what they say? Are you going to that minnow fishing club on Friday? Well, the guys just invited me. I figured there wouldn't be any harm in going to visit at least once. There's something about that place that just ain't right, and I don't like it. Well, I'm not going to join or anything. Just go out and take a look. It's one thing for Prack and his crews to go there, but when they start involving our mayor, it's time for an intervention. <laughs> Ladies, I appreciate your concern, but it'll be fine. Oh my, oh my, what did I tell you? Look who just walked in, it's Matt Carson himself. <laughs> All the 
Tell me you're Mayor Hill. Hi, I'm Matt Carson. Hi, Mr. Carson. Well, I wanted to be the first to officially welcome you to our town, Whistling Pines. Well, thank you very much. And please, call me Matt. Well, if you'll call me Jim. That's a deal. <coughs> oh, forgive my manners. Let me introduce you to Debbie, our town manager. Hi, Debbie. It's nice to meet you. And this is Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. It's our a pleasure. pleasure. Well, welcome to Whistling Pines. I watch you every night. Oh, you look even better in person. Well, thank you. You know, I believe I'll give you all day to stop talking like that. Oh, and I'm being rude. I'm sorry. This is our new intern, Jason. Jason is also making his debut as a cameraman on this story. Nice to meet you. So, you're doing a story here. I'm sure you're familiar with our series, Getting to Know You. Absolutely. Well, we're going to be doing a story on Whistling Pines. Ah. I hope that's all right with you. Well, absolutely. We, we would be honored. And we we're all just a little curious of why you would pick a town like Whistling Pines. Well, let's just say your town's reputation has come to our um, attention. Mayor, you and I got to talk. Have you seen USA Today? today. Well, it says that the President of the United States flew from Washington to Atlanta this morning. Now, you don't have to be no geography expert to know that that puts the flight plan Jack, right over Jack, Whistling Jack. Pines. And can Please, you imagine... Can you come back to the office, uh, in, say, in about an hour? And You know, we got company here. Don't you recognize who this is? Hi, I'm uh, Matt Carson. Can't he's, say I do. He's on TV. Ah. Oh. You do one of those cable public access programs out of Raleigh? No, uh, no, he, he's ANN News. It's Matt Carson. Oh, sorry, I, I don't watch TV. I just read the paper. Ooh, you all ought to, too. You can get all kinds of story ideas in here. Like this one about Whistling Pines. Air Force One flew over Whistling Pines. Now, can you imagine how much RF that's radio wave interference stuff. Can you just imagine how much RF that thing's put now? You know, I think this explains why one of our citizens, Bob, has gone plum crazy over squirrels. Wants to shoot them all. <laughs> Jack, Jack, please, can, can we meet in my office in, a, in about an hour? Would that be okay? Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. We want to keep these things in town. I can't even want Bob all over the news, huh? Exactly. So. Everybody might think the whole town's crazy. <laughs> so I'll see you in just a little bit, okay? Okay. okay? All right. Son, you may have just found us the segment that wins us an Emmy. My social. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Carson. I'm Christy Blake, and as Miss Whistling Pines for two years running, it's my official duty to welcome you to Whistling Pines. And I just heard that you guys were in town, so I'm sorry I'm not dressed better. It's okay. Listen, it is awfully nice to meet you, Christy. Christy, this is Jason, our videographer for the story we're doing here in town. Hi, Jason. Welcome to Whistling Pines. Same to you, Christy. I mean, what am I saying? It's nice to see you. I mean, meet you. It's nice to meet you. So, do you live in the big city of New York with Mr. Carson? Yeah, I, well, I don't, I don't live with Mr. Carson, but I live in New York, in my own place. Oh, you have your own place? So, if I would come up and visit, you could maybe show me around? Of course. I, I mean, it'd be my pleasure. So, Matt, looks like you guys are going to be working over the weekend. Yeah, uh, since I have to be back in New York on Monday for the broadcast, I'm going to do all my on-camera stand-ups tomorrow and Sunday afternoon, and then I'm going to head back to New York and let Jason here handle the B-roll stuff. That's extra shots we use in the story. Okay. So you're going to be here for a while? Yeah, it's looking like a week. Oh. Well, be sure just to let us know if there's anything we can do. Actually, if it's not too much trouble, and I hate to bother you on a weekend, I was just wondering if maybe we could get together tomorrow for an interview. Absolutely. I'd be happy to help. And Good. Tonight being Friday, do you gentlemen have any dinner plans you need help with? Well, actually, I'm going to be working in the room tonight trying to get ready for the story. But if it's not intruding, maybe Miss Whistling Pines here could show my friend Jason 
some of the prettier places in town where we can get some nice shots for the story? Yeah, I would love to. I don't have any more official appearances this afternoon or this evening, so um, I just need to change and I can meet you in maybe an hour. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Um, what about you, Mr. Mayor? Would oh, you, no, would you no. maybe, maybe want to join us? I, I appreciate that. You're in very capable hands here. And uh, I actually have an appointment with the local fishing club, so thank you. Uh, sorry about that. I, I wish you could join us. Matt, I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow then. Thank you, Mayor. Looking forward to it. Thanks for everything. Hey, nice to see ya. How you doing? Doing well, fine. How about you? Good to see that. Good to see you. Good to see you, Brad. Yeah. So, Mayor, now that you're here, we don't want you to think that this is some sort of secret society like the Chamber of Commerce, but if you want full membership and benefits of the Minnow Fishing Club, you're going to have to take an oath to keep our secrets. Hmm. Yeah, you know, like protecting our trade secrets. You understand? Yeah, and... And not to mention keeping some unnamed nosy women from knowing all of our business. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's nothing illegal or anything. It's just, you know, protecting our club's interests. You know, kind of like the uh, moose, the elks, the masons, all those other animals. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Something like that. So, you think you're ready to take the pledge? Sure, I'm knowing you guys well enough, it should be pretty harmless. Yeah, yeah, let's do all it. Right. Cool. Well, great. Well, good. The chief here is our president, so um, he'll read it and just repeat after him. Hmm. All right. Mr. Mayor, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Mayor Hill. I, Mayor Hill. Do solemnly swear to protect the club secrets of the Minnow Fishing Club. Do solemnly swear to protect the secrets of the Minnow Fishing Club. To disclose to no one the purpose and mission of this organization except ordered by a court or law enforcement agency. Law enforcement agency? Is that some crap you put in there? No, stupid. It's been in there since the club's been organized. Jeez. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Mayor. Go ahead. All right, let's see here. Uh, to disclose the purpose and mission of the Minnow Fishing Club, unless ordered to by the courts or law enforcement agency. And if accepted into membership, I agree to abide by the bylaws of the club and the OFCA. OFCA? Online Fishing Clubs of America. Online Fishing Clubs? Mayor, I can't explain it to you until you take the full oath. Oh, okay. Let's see if I can get this right. And if accepted into membership, I agree to abide by the bylaws of the club and the OFCA. Well, all right, man. Yeah. Welcome right. to the club. Welcome to the Welcome club. To the well, thanks. Fish. Appreciate well, it. Well, yeah, man. It's about time. Thanks. So, what's this online fishing club all about? Well, Mayor, it's best to explain it if you just come fishing with us. Oh, well, I, I didn't bring my fishing rod or anything. We've got everything you need. <laughs> Trust me. Right this way, Mayor. Oh, I get it. Like online video game fishing. Uh, something like that. <laughs> Mayor, you know most of us are single or divorced guys. And quite honestly, the pickings are kind of slim in this town. You got that right. Yeah, you got it right. So when this online dating thing came on, we decided to give it a try. But we didn't want anybody in town knowing any of our business. Well, I don't think anybody in town knows your business. I just thought it was a good old boys fishing club. Well, except for the misspelling of the name and all. Oh, it ain't misspelled. Minnow stands for men in need of women. Oh. And look, let's go back to the countrygirlmatch.com. They had some yeah, potential though. That sounds oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. I sure like it. There it is. 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 There it is.
Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I said, mind your mouth. Oh, oh, remember that. Remember that. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, no. No, 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 the other no, way. The other yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 well, you see, we ain't actually invited one of them out on a date yet. We're waiting on a very special occasion. We're planning the first annual Minnow Fishing Club dance. Oh, all this time and you hadn't had any dates. Uh, well, I guess a dance is a good idea. When is it? Well, we haven't officially set a date yet. Uh, because we're working on one small problem. Oh. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> you know what this is? Town park? It's not just any town park. It's Whistling Pines Central Park. See? New York's not the only place with a Central Park. I guess not. I think I like this park better than our Central Park. You know, I've always wanted to visit New York, but I don't think I could ever live there. Why not? All those people walking up and down those busy streets, and they don't even take time to talk to each other. Everybody talks to each other down here. I mean, we might not have anything to say, but we'll <laughs> talk anyway. After those planes flew into the World Trade Center, well, people started talking more after that, but so sad from what I see on TV. It looks like they've just gone back to not talking and back to trying to run each other over. Why don't they talk to each other up there? It's kind of the way of life. Everybody's always trying to make a living, rush off to this and that. It's, so it's how it is. They're just too busy to say hi. I guess you're right. It's kind of sad. I like how everybody down here always says hi. Yeah, like no matter what, they'll always talk to you. <laughs> See how you're doing, how your day's going. This is where Pratt here has the keys to the success of our dance in his hands. Yeah, these boys can't dance, but I'm gonna make it easy enough for Bob can do it. So what's that supposed to mean? Y'all ready, fellas? Come on, get up, get up. This is what we're gonna, you know what? This is what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the lawnmower dance. Yeah, just watch me. I'll show you, just watch me. After I graduated, I got this internship with uh, a and and was lucky enough to become Matt Carson's assistant. So here I am, doing a story on a small town like this. That's so cool, you got right into the big time. You know, my dad's in broadcasting. No way. Yeah, he majored in it in college and he always dreamed about going to the big time. He worked at a radio station in Raleigh and that's where he met my mom. He was pretty famous up there. He actually got a call from Los Angeles offering him a job, but um, wow. he had just proposed to my mom and he knew how much she loved Whistling Pines, so he turned them down. Wow. That's love. 
turning down a dream job like that? Yeah, he said he never regretted it. He was able to save up enough money to start the local radio station around here. And he said he'd rather be a big fish in a little pond than one in a big crowd in LA. And he said it's the best decision he's ever made. Choosing love always wins, I guess, in the end. I've been in New York a little too long. Why do you say that? I don't know. I'd... Up in New York, you never hear about people giving up jobs like that for love. It's all career focused. That's so sad. Why do you say that? I guess I just think about the future. I think it'd be really sad to be sitting on my porch all alone when I'm old someday because I chose some job over love. And my dad always said, whenever you leave a job, people forget about you in a week. But someone who really loves you, they never forget about you, even when you're not there anymore. Buddy, look at this. This is disgusting. You must be desperate as hell trying to get some mail order floozies up in here. And Mayor, it's none of my business, but Susan's only been gone a few weeks. Oh, wait a minute, Debbie. Mayor had nothing to do with this. We just invited him to get him out of the house. Oh, you pitiful, desperate men. They're for an hour, man. Why? I'll tell you why, because misery loves company. Look, I have you to know that the Minnow Fishing Club is a nationally charter organization. Like a national organization gave a charter to a club that can't even spell minnow, huh? Well, well actually, it's not a misspelling. It, it's an acronym. An acronym? For what? If it's any of your business, you stand for men in need of women. What's wrong with that? That's natural. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us all. What, you can't find any women around here that'll have you, so you have to import them? Who want any women from around here? They all stuck up. I tried to talk to you in the sixth grade, but you laughed at me. I, I didn't laugh at you. I was just nervous about a fella trying to talk to me. Well, that hurt me. You know, and I really liked you. But I promised me and my mama that I'll find somebody outside of Whistling Pines. Well, I'll have you know that we have some of the nicest people in the world right here in Whistling Pines. What makes you think you're going to go somewhere else and find somebody better? Well, maybe I'll find somebody that won't laugh at me. I told you I didn't laugh. Hey, why don't you come over here with me? Oh, so what do we do now? I say we just let him talk. Well, this has been really nice. I could stay out here and talk to you all night, but I have to get up in the morning and cut the ribbon for Jake Carter's new hardware store. Well, listen, thank you for the tour and the walk around town and this talk here. I, I, it's been really great. Thank you, Christy. Well, I just hope you got some pretty shots for your story on Whistling Pines. You know, the town's really excited about you and Mr. Carson being here. I had a good time, too. It's too bad you're all New Yorkerized. Dad could really use a guy like you around the station. Thanks, Christy. It's been really great getting to know you. Good night, Jason. Good night, Christy. It really bothers me that you thought I was laughing at you. I would never laugh at you in school. I was just nervous because you were talking to me. Well, I thought you was laughing at me. You know, that really broke my heart. You know, I liked you. And a matter of fact, I've been sitting here looking on this dumb tail computer for a woman like you. Incredible. Yeah, right. All of these years, I thought that you were being rude to me and ignoring me, and you thought I was being mean to you? Yep. What a waste of what could have at least been a great friendship. Come here, Mr. Pratt. What in the world is wrong with you? What, are they killing each other out there or something? 
No. But, uh, whatever you do, promise me you won't go out there. It'll scar you for life. Hi, Bill. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking over the stuff Jason shot down here now. Oh, man, it's like the redneck capital of the world. You're gonna love it. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, these people make Charlie Sheen look sane. <laughs> I can't wait for you to see it. This is gonna put the ratings over the top. Wow, I can't believe that Matt Carson is content! Oh. <laughs> Woo. Wow, Mr. Mayor, where are you preaching at today? Yeah, who died? Nobody died. I got my big interview with Matt Carson today. Oh yeah, that's right. Mayor! Mayor! Oh, I'm so glad I caught you here. Wait a minute. Who died? Nobody died. I've got my interview with Matt Carson today. Oh, yeah. The TV guy. Anyway, look here. Front page 1A, USA Today. Today. It says the president has announced he's going to have a live webcast from the White House this weekend. A webcast is on the internet. Now, I dug back through my USA Today. It's going all the way back to when they first started printing. And I found that. Look at the headline. The internet is interactive. Now, that means that the internet through all the computers in people's houses is a two-way street. They can see what we're doing right in our own houses. Jack, I thought you don't have a computer. I don't. Because I'm not going to let them see inside my house any more than I'm going to let them give me that mind control tetanus shot they wanted to give me after Frank Lloyd's poodle bit me. There is something really wrong with you. Oh, Lord. Coming from you, I ought to voluntarily commit myself. I wish you would. Oh, God, not again. Jack, if you don't have a computer, why do you even care? Because it's my responsibility to inform the mayor so that he can warn the citizens of Whistling Pines, which is something he'll have to do because you'll be too busy working security detail down at the Quick Mart. Mayor, if I shoot him, will I get the town beautification award this year? Chief, put that gun away. Thank goodness. Saved by the bell. Hello? Oh, hi, Matt. Sure. Anything we can do for you. Okay. Yeah, Monday's fine. We'll, we'll look forward to seeing you then. All right. Thanks so much. Bye now. Well, looks like my few minutes of fame are going to have to wait till Monday. Matt Carson wants to shoot my interview as the last thing before he heads back up to New York. Said he wants to get everything in line and think about some questions to ask me. Hmm. Well, you see, there's more to Whistling Pines than he thought. He needed a little more time to think about it. Yeah. Can I ask you two something? Have you been looking at the internet? The internet? Duh. Of course. This has got to be somebody else's. We haven't ordered anything yet. Oh, don't you think I know that? Look, I don't have time to stand around here all day waiting for you to order. This is what you're going to get. Oh, Lord. She's bound to have the internet at her house. Claire, I really wish you'd ban USA Today from town. You are unconstitutional. Uh, hey, come on, guys. Let's just relax and eat our meal that we didn't order so I can get home, get out of these clothes, sit on the deck and read a good book. Oh, uh, hi, Mr. Carson. Yeah, I'm all set up here at the town hall for the big mayor interview, just like you asked. Thanks for being so punctual, but uh, there's been a change of plans. Yeah. Yeah, I just canceled the mayor's shoot. The footage you've got of all these crazy people down here. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, it is over the top. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, it's, I think we're just going to skip the interview and tell him on Monday that I've got to get back to New York. Everybody's going to go ape over these crazy hicks. Uh, Mr. Carson, do you think we're doing the right thing? You know, just showing the crazy people? I mean, there are some really nice people here, too. 
Oh, be careful there, young man. Keep a check on that journalistic integrity. Has that local beauty queen put some southern charm magic over on you there, lover boy? She is really nice. I'm sure she is. Just enjoy the nice, and then get your butt back to New York. In the meantime, get me some more B-roll and maybe try to grab a few more crazies at work. Thanks, Mr. Carson. Yeah, you too. Bye. Fancy meeting you here. Hey. What do you all set up for? I was here to do that interview with the mayor, the town hall, but uh, Mr. Carson just called and canceled it. So, why? Why did you not? I don't know. It's the industry. Things change. Mm -hmm. Last minute. Um, can I ask you something? Sure. Absolutely. Something okay? Yeah. Well, my dad started asking me some questions last night. He just wanted to know what attracted Mr. Carson's attention to Whistling Pines. I mean. Not like this is some big tourist spot or something. I think it was that they wanted to do a small town for a change because they've been doing only big cities on those getting to know you segments on the news. Mm -hmm. So, something like that. Yeah, well, why Whistling Pines? Um, hey, how did, how did your ribbon cutting go to the other day? I mean, it was just the usual, um, what do you call it? A photo op for a local business guy. Are you going to be in town until Monday? Yeah, I think so, as far as I know. Good. Sundays are pretty laid back around here. <laughs> More laid back than now? Easy there, city boy. Anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted, I was going to see if you wanted to see a pretty special place here in Whistling Pines. Well, don't let my city boy ways interrupt a good invitation. All right, well, meet me tomorrow afternoon at 1.30 in Central Park. And. That's our Central Park, by the way. Good grief. What the hell was that? <laughs> Got him good this time. And I didn't even have to fire a single shot. I wired the copper top of my bird feeder with 220 volts. And when that giant rat got on top, I hit the switch and whammo! Big rat heaven. Yeah! <laughs> Oh, great. Here comes CSI Whistling Pines. Yes, oh yes, this Honorable Court is open and sitting for the dispatch of its business. God save the state and the Honorable Court. The Honorable Andrew Buffer Jackson presiding. Shut up. I don't know who it was or what it was that got me up from my nap on this Saturday just to come down here for a magistrate's hearing. Not you. Chief Norton, what members of the animal kingdom is he terrifying at this time? Still squirrels, Your Honor. Is he discharging firearms in the town again? No, sir. His weapon of choice this time was electricity. He electrocuted a squirrel using a bird feeder, Your Honor. Oh, for heaven's sakes, that's animal cruelty. I sentence you to 24 hours of community service at Pete and Francis Animal Rescue Farm. What? You mean that place where they take in all those homeless cats, goats, sheep, and cows? That's the one. 
The sentence will be served on weekends beginning on the 10th. <laughs> Ma'am, please help me. You, you know all those animals are gonna know what I, I did to that squirrel and uh, I don't wanna end up as some goat's girlfriend. I object. Now what, Jack? You're not a lawyer and you can't object to anything. Well, Your Honor, I did read in the USA Today that Bob here, as crazy as he is, he is entitled to a lawyer before he's sentenced. Well, I ought to ban that newspaper from this county. That's what I really ought to do. Well, then you'd be just as unconstitutional as the chief here. Now you're charged with something. You're charged with contempt of court. You know what you two need? Some culture. I sentenced both of you all to an art appreciation session at Karen Dobson's art gallery. Case closed. All right, shut up. There you are. Oh, hey, Mr. Carson. They told me in the hotel lobby they thought they'd seen you go for a walk. I tried you on the cell phone. Sorry, I've had it on mute. I'm supposed to meet Christy here in a minute. Christy? Yeah, Miss Whistling Pines. Oh, well, look at you. Don't worry, I'm not going to interrupt your little conquest. I just wanted you to know that finding this place was pure genius. All the shots you got of these crazy idiots like Mr. Squirrel Hater and Mr. USA Today guy, awesome. As a matter of fact, I don't need you for anything else on this shoot. So if you want to pack your stuff up and go stand by back to New York a little earlier, that is fine with me. You deserve it. Man, this is better than any movie. I've already uploaded this stuff back to the editors in New York, and they are working overtime on it. Our ratings are going to go through the roof when this airs. And you, my friend, are definitely going from intern to full-time staff. These crazy rednecks are going to put you on the network's A-list. Jason. Is this true? This big story you've been working on is just to make fun of us? Oops, Christy. Oops, sorry buddy. Just remember, there's only about two million of those back in New York City. And with the money you're gonna be making? Chris, look, I'll keep the same flight and I'll talk to you on the way back. Christy! <laughs> about the paper again. No, Mayor. This is big. The whole town's been hoodooed, shanghaied, hoodwinked, bamboozled, snookered, bedazzled, played like a fiddle. What are you talking about? Mr. Big City TV guy, Matt Carson. You want to know what his story on Whistling Pines is? He's painting the whole town out to be class A fools. You don't know this for a fact, Jack. I care about you, man, but sometimes... No, Mayor, you can call Christy. She overheard Matt Carson talking to his little camera guy, Jason, down at Central Park. Jack, do me a favor. Don't say anything to anybody. The last thing we need to do is to get everybody riled up over this. Can you promise me to do that? Absolutely. Mum's the word. I do believe the mayor's going to kick some butt. <laughs> Man. Mayor, what brings you out on a pretty day like today in Whistling Pines? Well, I was hoping I could catch it before you headed back to New York, if you got a second. Well, I... Yeah, it's a little hot out once you get in the car. So what can I do for you, Mayor? Well, I wanted to catch you before you headed out of town and just thank you for coming to visit our town. Oh, believe me, the pleasure is all mine, Mayor. As a matter of fact, I was getting ready to call you. We've got so much stuff already. I don't see any need to take up any more of your time to do an interview tomorrow. I was hoping I could 
take a minute of your time just to maybe shed some light on some things you might have missed about the town. I, well, I promise I, it'll only take a minute. Sure, why not? Well, I know you remember me and Jack down at the diner the other day. The guy with the thing for USA Today. <laughs> I wish he was that crazy about ANN News. I know what you mean. Well, Jack can come across as a little bit of a loony tune. A little bit. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of people don't know about Jack and his background. Please tell me. Well, he and his best friend from high school joined the military and actually served three tours over in the Middle East. Really? Uh, unfortunately, they were, in that last tour, they were driving and an explosion hit their unit. Jack was seriously injured along with most of his crew. He, he managed to pull everybody to safety except for one, his best friend. He died in his arms. Man, that's terrible, Mayor. Well, what's worse is, come to find out, it was a friendly fire accident. Uh, that's even worse. Well, what's worse yet is, unfortunately, the suits up in Washington and the Pentagon trying to cover the friendly fire part of the accident up. And that just didn't sit well with Jack. You can kind of see he's got a little bit of a problem with big government, and hence the obsession with the stories in the paper. I can imagine. I promised I wouldn't keep you long. I just wanted to mention one more thing. You remember meeting Bob, don't you? His <laughs> squirrel man. <laughs> yeah. <That's him. laughs> What's up with that guy? <laughs> well, you know, Bob was one of these guys that was always picked on and bullied in high school. He was really smitten with one of the cheerleaders. She used to talk to him, but kind of in a condescending way. And Bob took this to mean that she really liked him. And he really did did like her. So the school prom came around and he was gonna ask her to the prom. And when he did, she literally laughed at him in front of half the school. You're kidding. So, no, and you know, after that, it just really crushed him and affected him. So he moved here to Whistling Pines, started feeding the, the birds just to kind of keep his mind off the situation. The uh, police chief, Morgan. You know, a lot of people have told me they think it's kind of odd that he sits in that police car in the parking lot down at that convenience store all the time. What is it, the, um, the Quick Mart? <laughs> right. Well, it does seem odd, and unless you know a story, Another story. Another true story. Okay. Morgan, he was a rookie cop with the Charlotte Police Force. And he got a call from a, about a convenience store. The manager couldn't get in touch with his employees at the store. So he was telling some of his other officers about it, and apparently it was a common occurrence. The manager tried to call the store, and nobody would answer, and they'd go out, and same thing over and over again. So when he got there, the clerk was gone and the store was being looted. They found the clerk two days later wandering around a country road in a daze. Apparently one of the robbers was also a sex offender. She was only 17 years old. So anytime there's a teenage girl working at the Quick Mart, the chief's there as much as he can be. Well, I imagine. told you I wouldn't keep you any longer. I know you have a big day tomorrow. Flight back to New York and anchoring the evening news. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, Mayor. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate your time. Thank you. <laughs>
I just wanted to know if we should warn the town about it. Well, maybe folks hadn't seen the promo or think it's on another night. Nah, I think we're a little late for that, Mayor. I was down at the diner this morning and everybody's talking about it over breakfast. I didn't know what to do. Did you kick Matt Carson's butt? I tried to talk to him, but I don't know if it did any good. You know these networks. All they care about is ratings. And I hate to rile up the whole town if talking to Matt Carson did some good. But you know, the people in this town are strong and they know the truth. And you can help me remind them of that. What do you think? I think you might have a point, Mayor. But I still wish you'd whip Matt Carson's butt. Oh, crap. I got an appointment at the art gallery. Art gallery? Since when did you take up art? That's a long story. I'll talk to you later. Why in the world are you waiting on me? Why don't you just go on in? Man, I ain't going in there by myself. Might be some kind of art cult or something. Art cult? Are you crazy? Wait a minute. You might actually be on to something. I might need to look into this in my papers when I get home. <sighs> well, anyway, come on. We gotta get in there. We're late. been signed up for some art appreciation lessons. Um, don't know if you remember me or not, but my name is Karen Dobson. I remember you. You're Blake Dobson's daughter, ain't you? You remember Principal Dobson over at the high school? Well, I did miss a lot of school. Lord. Anyway, I heard you won some big national art award. I even read about it in USA Today. For heaven's sakes. Uh, I remember you, but I don't remember your name. I'm, I'm bad with names. He's bad with brains too. If you want. Oh, shut up. All right, well, let's get started. Are any of you artists? Well, my Aunt Mabel gives me a coloring book for Christmas every year. Oh, All right, guys, um, what we're gonna do is a perspective exercise where I'm gonna see how your perspective changes from the beginning to the end of the course. So um, if you come on over here, don't worry, it's not gonna bite you. Um, and I'm going to step out of the way and y'all take a look at the painting, you know, think about how you feel about it. And what would you name this picture if you were the artist? That's, that's weird. But, uh, I'd call it Bird Kill Squirrel. Oh, Lord, just let me see. Oh, that is weird. Sort of looks like Walt Disney threw up. I know, right? There you are. Have you been watching the TV today? No, no, ma'am, I, I haven't. I had visitors this morning. They're airing the big story tonight. Woohoo! Whistling Pines is going big time! Oh, oh, well, uh, seems like I did hear something about that. I bet you I know what it is. It's all this talk about A-N-N. -N. It's in New York. I bet you he's thinking about Susan. And finally tonight, what has become your favorite segment on Monday evenings, our Getting to Know You series. Tonight, we're covering our visit to the small North Carolina town of Whistling Pines. For me personally, this story has become one of my favorites. It was rumor that brought us to Whistling Pines, Rumor of a town full of quirky people and odd traditions. But as is the case in most rumors, I've learned a big lesson during my visit. It's easy for those of us used to big cities to make fun of small towns, especially ones with a different culture from our own. What I discovered in Whistling Pines was a culture that accepted everyone, no matter what quirky habits or strange opinions they had. I found a town willing to stand up for its people as fervently as most of us would stand up for our families. I met war heroes, 
and those doing their job with an amazing passion. And I also met people who had an amazing compassion for those who were just trying to get through another day. The most powerful lesson any of us can learn is one that changes our perspective. And boy, did I ever get mine changed more than ever before. I want to thank the amazing mayor of Whistling Pines, Jim Hill. If Mayor Hill was ever to hold a seminar on the art of being a mayor, I believe every mayor in America, whether big town or small, should do anything it took to attend. They would definitely go back to their own hometowns as better mayors and better men. And I also want to thank the youngest member of our ANN news team, our intern Jason Steele. On a flight back to New York from Whistling Pines, Jason told me that the young lady who serves as Miss Whistling Pines had made a more profound impact on him than anyone he had ever met. He said she had taught him that contentment had nothing to do with what size city you're in. It's all about people. And it's obvious Jason was impacted, for he has announced to us he is leaving A&N to move to a smaller community, saying he believes you can be a big fish in a small pond. And while we are deeply saddened to see Jason leave, we know he will be successful wherever he goes. I'll wrap up this segment by challenging all of us, big cities and small, to remember it's all about the people, not buildings or geography. The next time someone walks by you on the street, say hello. You'll be doing something they do every day on the sidewalks of a town called Whistling Pines. From all of us at ANN News, we hope you all have a good night. Piggly wiggly full of collard greens. First Baptist Church Chief of Police at the Dairy Queen Buying something to slur Whistling blues. Take my mind Whistling blues. Take me home are the great ones. Oh, so sure you, man. That's right. Well, Mr. Merritt, looks like you did something right for a change. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you two hot dogs today. Well, thanks, Doris. And you only have to pay for one. <laughs> well, oh, well. Did y'all see it? Wasn't it great? Hey, man. Man. Check this out. We made the front page of the USA Today. Today. Well, doggone if we did. Wait a minute, where did you get that dang thing? I subscribed to it. <laughs> you don't think I trust getting my paper from one of them boxes people are always stealing. As a matter of fact, you're the police chief in this town. Did you know the box right here in Whistling Pines has been stolen? Never mind that, Jack. Mayor, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to come to the Minnow Club dance on Friday night. You're gonna be our guest on. It's gotten so big, so much attention, that we had to move to the community side. Yeah, and Nantucket's playing. Yeah. Nantucket. That's wow. Cool. So you guys are really going to have this dance. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be big. And, and you worked up the courage to invite some of these girls you met online? Mary, we couldn't find any finer ladies to invite in the natives from Whistling Pines. Did you do it yet? Did you ask the library lady out? Man, she ain't want nothing to do with me. She's the prettiest girl in town. Oh, Lord. Do I have to do everything? You don't know nothing about women. Look, my buddy Bob over there, he's been talking all week about taking you to the dance on Friday night, saying you're the prettiest girl in town and stuff like that. And well, I have to be honest with you. I told him that I didn't think you were all that great. He could probably do a lot better since he's been on the national news and all. And he... 
Well, you listen here. You better tell your buddy over there to meet me at 7.30 on Friday. And if he doesn't show up, I'm coming after you. And you won't live to read another newspaper ever. Got that? Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. You got it? Oh yeah, I got it. But, uh, man, it's you that ain't got it. Have you asked Bonnie here to the dance yet? No, not yet. You, you wimp. I ain't no wimp. Uh, well? I'm behind you. Uh, you been busy over at Town Hall? You wimp. Shut up, squirrel head. Whatever. Well, you see, we got kind of got this dance over at the fishing club on fr Friday night, and, and I was just wondering, uh, unless Well, you... it's about time, Jack. Do you know how long I've waited for you to ask me to do something? Who do you think throws this paper up on your porch every morning? So 7.30, Friday, you better be there. Or I'm coming with her to find you. And trust me, it won't be pretty. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> she just scared the heck out of me. you were going to get the nice punch bowl set from the Baptist church. You're kidding me, right? I'm not going in there for nothing. I hear they want 10% of everything I got. Oh, Lord. What? And it, there's no ladle. Label? We don't need a label. Everybody <laughs> knows it's not a punch. label. A ladle. How are they going to get the punch from the bowl into the cups? Oh, Christ. Oh, Lord. Well, not that it matters anyway. I haven't seen our dates yet. I bet they stood us up. Well, I hope not. I took $20 out at the ATM to take uh, Debbie to the uh, IHOP in Raleigh after the dance. Huh, all the way to Raleigh? Yeah. Oh, boys, your dates await. Looks like we're members of the Stag Fishing Club tonight. I don't mind. Look at everybody having fun. Yeah, I guess you're right. Man, man, guess who's here? Oh, hi, Dad. Hey, honey. Oh, it's just so good to see you. I've missed you. I've missed you so much. And I saw that story, and I just missed you so much. I had to come. It was great. And Dad, about Mom. Hey, it's okay. You know she's always wanted to go to New York. No, no, Dad, that's not it. Susan, you didn't have to come all this way. I know you're busy with the play and all. And I was really nervous about coming here. I didn't know if we could take the silly woman back. Well, I don't know might have to call a special session of the town council to have a vote on that. <laughs> I love you. What are you doing here, city boy? Christy, listen. I know I was an idiot for ever getting involved with the original reason that Matt wanted to do the story. And for that, I'm sorry. But I don't regret it. If I had never come down here, I wouldn't have met you. And I'm hoping that you can forgive me and go to the dance with me tonight. Running a little late, aren't you? Just one more thing. What's that? 
Would you have a problem with me accepting a job offer your dad made me at the radio station? So many questions at one time. Can I think about it? Of course, yeah. Oh, hush. Don't you think if you're my date, you ought to dance with me? Hi, everybody. Um, we want to thank you all for coming out to our first ever Minnow Fishing Club dance. Now we've had a great week here in Westland Pines, and to help us celebrate, we've got a great southern band. Please give it up for Nantucket!
I'm so glad you waited for me. <laughs> <laughs>